Greetings all you Manus, Miners, and Grimes, and today, well, as you see in the background footage, this is a long survival run, well, long disruption run, as Ash, solo, basically only using my Nakana Zaw. Now, at these really high levels, these enemies are really damn tough, even though I was on Mars, I was farming for Inaros Prime relics. Because Olympus on Mars gives you meso relics out the ass if you if you complete all four conduits again and again. Anyway, these enemies don't stand a chance with Blade Storm. The bleed ticks are insanely high, at peaks of seventeen thousand. Other times it's about eight thousand per tick. And Ash's passive makes slash damage stronger and last longer. Anyway. This is the Ash build that I was using for the background footage. It is your typical long duration build with Seeking Shuriken and enough power strength to completely remove enemy armor. And at these high levels, the enemies have a lot of armor. You could be thinking, well, this isn't going to do too much against the Steel Path. Ash destroys the Steel Path because enemies can't see him and slash damage is so incredibly powerful. This is the Nakana build I've been using my Chaos Blade, probably one of the most powerful melee weapons I have, and it's not even close. And these are the parts that it's made of. But let's go back to that build. Why do I have Exodia Hunt? Very simple. Slam attacks. Slam attacks to pull enemies closer to me so I can kill them all really quickly. Not exactly super helpful against ghouls because they do explode doing toxin and cold damage, but the amount of toxin and cold damage that they produce isn't enough to take Ash down. What is enough to take Ash down, and the only time I died during this survival run was when the enemies had toxin weapons and they were about level 300 and a stray bullet hit me. That instantly killed me, but that it was the only time I died. The weapons that I had he here, other than my sword, was the Panther Prime and the Akajara Prime. And the damage fall off started to happen about level 120, level 130, so I had to resort to melee. That being said, I was using the Nerman Focus School, and to gain energy, I was using energy pizzas. I do not have Arcane Energize, nor do I want to farm it or purchase it, because I simply do not have thousands of platinum for a rank 5 Arcane Energize. Nor do I really care about Arcane Energize all that much. So this build, keeping going with the background footage, absolutely obliterates everything. I reckon that this Nakana could probably handle maxed out level enemies, level 9999, but I am not staying long enough in a mission to test that. If DE will ever allow us to spawn these types of enemies in the Simulchrome, I would really know what, what limit does my Nakana have, but using Blind Justice with Condition Overload, Viral, Slash, and Red Crits, I have a really good suspicion that this weapon is going to kill every single enemy thrown in front of it, and it has. I should have recorded it, but about a month and a half ago or something like that, I was doing a sol solo disruption run as a Naros on Lua against the Corpus, and seeing level 350 Dumblists, and this weapon tore them apart just really fast. Probably a bit faster than these guys because these are Grenier and they do have a lot of armor. But Seeking Shuriken completely removes their armor and then it's like one hit to kill these high level enemies with the Nakana. The Demolists do take some more damage to kill but that's only because Demolists have higher health values and higher armor values. That being said, it really doesn't matter. So, does Ash work solo, long survival runs, long disruption runs, long missions in general? Yes, he absolutely does. But here are a few tips playing Ash at really high levels. Always be invisible. Always be invisible. Just like Avara, invisibility is the only way he can survive really high level enemies. Secondly, spam the hell out of Seeking Shuriken or just shuriken in general, but with its augment, especially if you're going against high level armored enemies. It's really unfortunate that it doesn't remove shields. Maybe eventually there would be a change where it actually does remove enemy shields. That would be perfect. 
And you could also be saying, well, if you're using an Akana, why don't you just bring the DiQ with its Amalgam mod? I don't have the DiQ anymore. Because it's boring and, well, I hope the DiQ Prime is different. Anyway, I never got bored during this run because I was actually playing a frame that is fun. Ash, I feel, is a very fun frame. And you can, you do, you can use this build exactly as it is if you want to. You could also say we don't have prime continuity maxed out. I would have to either get another one or form all of my frames that use it, which is almost all my frames that have duration in their abilities and need it. So I'm not doing that. But use this as a template for your own Ash build. And yeah, if you need Meso Relics, Olympus on Mars is where you go to get Mesos. Because it spawns nothing but Meso Relics after about four, after about round two. For Lith Relics, all you have to do is let two conduits die every round after the second round, which isn't that bad. And with a squad, you could definitely maximize your farming here for Lith and Meso Relics. For Neo Relics, it's Ur on Uranus, and for Axie Relics, you can either do Kelpie on Sedna. Or, what I would much rather do, Lua, uh, Apollo on Lua. Why Apollo? Because there isn't as much stuff in the reward pool as, as Kelpie. But if you do need Goss's stuff, then Kelpie's the only place you're going to be able to get it. Probably pronouncing that name wrong, but I don't care. Long story short... Ash is absolutely fantastic for this type of playstyle, for this type of mission. Definitely some things you have to watch out for is your cloak bean run out and energy leech X misses are the bane of your existence because if you don't have energy and you run out of energy and your cloak goes away, you're probably about to die. Ash does not have the survivability to take hits like a lot of other frames. But the invisibility is very helpful. Anyway, I hope you'd enjoyed this new style of video. I could have easily just done this run for a while, paused, uh, set, up, set up Audacity and start screen recording and do like a normal let's play. But I feel like this is a lot better because I was more concentrated here. And this run was total an hour and 30 minutes. Not the longest I've ever gone in disruption. The longest I've gone is about two and a half hours. But either way, the Chaos Blade Zaw is no joke. So thank you guys so much for watching. And remember, in Trophy, we trust.